And now uh, to you, Alex McGoob, State of the Market, Man of the Street. It's funny, we, we have our, our team Zoom meetings every Monday. And without fail, Alex is always on the sidewalk, always walking around, uh, sometimes in his short sleeve shirt, showing off his massive biceps. Uh, but Alex, give us, uh, give us the rundown of, of what's happening here. Beautiful. Thanks for that introduction, Martin. Uh, I'm embarrassed <laughs> and flattered at the same time. Uh, you know, so this is an advanced buyer seminar and, and uh, you know, selfless uh, or shameless self-promotion. Uh, but not for me, but for these two men on this call. John Pascarello is an amazing mortgage lender. We're currently working on a deal. We've done a bunch of deals uh, recently and he's been so super helpful. And Michael Landsman, uh, we recently did a deal together that was a little messy. Uh, and it was really amazing to have you in our corner uh, because you made a huge difference. So, you know, if, if you take one thing away from this call is who you work with matters. Work with the best, work with people that you like, know, and trust. Uh, but let's get to the matter at hand, talking about the market. So, you know, everyone asks a realtor, how's the market? How's the market? How's the market? Me, I always say it's amazing. Why? Because I love what I do. I love helping people and making a difference in people's lives. Uh, and this market over the past two years have, has been insane. The experiences I've had as a realtor have been overwhelming, exhausting, and exciting because uh, I made a lot of money too. Uh, so let's backtrack a little <laughs> bit and, uh, and talk about this market, talk about Manhattan uh, and Brooklyn for sure. But going back, you know, 2015, 2016, 2017, essentially represented a, a toppy time in the market. People were buying apartments based off of a floor plan. Pricing was through the roof. It was a crazy time. And then things started cooling off. We had a correction 2018, 2019. Prices were coming down. There was yep. less deal volume. And people might say, why? Why did that happen? It was essentially caused by policy changes. Uh, they capped salt deduction, state and local taxes. Uh, China stopped people from bringing boatloads of money and buying property. Uh, there was rental regulations. And, and again, things that go up must come down. So the market cooled off a little bit, uh, 2018, 2019. And then the very beginning of 2020, things started turning. We were excited for a brand new market and a new season. And then what happened? Pandemic. And literally, literally the city shut down for three months during that time, I never thought I would sell another home. Uh, and then when things opened up again, June 22nd, it was scary. It was end of days. I would walk uh, the streets alone, me and a lot of hungry pigeons because no one was feeding them. <laughs> you know, and during that time, I don't know if you guys remember, we were only able to do one-on-one -on -one showings, you know, because yep. of the virus. You had to mask and wear gloves and hand sanitize and keep six feet away. So during that time, I probably did uh, from from June 22nd to the end of December, I probably did 1000 showings, 1000 showings one on one with a buyer in a property from the Upper West Side to Fort Greene, Brooklyn, co-ops, condos, townhouses. And I would look people in the eyes and say, what do you think? And they'd say, are you crazy? Buy an apartment in New York City? But that was the time to buy, all right? Warren Buffett has a great quote, be fearful when others are greedy and be greedy when others are fearful. The time to buy is when people are nervous and scared. And people that bought during pandemic got some really great deals. But what happened uh, in late 2020, we had the most contentious election of our lifetime. Uh, you know, our world was in utter chaos. There was no vaccine yet. It really seemed like end of days. But then there was a vaccine came through and we got a new president. And beginning January 2021, there was all this pent up demand people that saw that New York was on sale and they came running. Some people that used to live here 10, 20 years ago, people from Portland and Seattle and California, they saw that New York City was on sale. And when something's yep. on sale, you buy it. So last year was, I think for most realtors, the best year they've ever had 
Uh, and frankly, because of that, I was able to buy my own apartment that I'm in right now. Uh, and being a homeowner, beyond saving money, uh, you know, Ramsey said that the average one bedroom rent is $5,000 a month. That means each year you're just basically throwing away $60,000 when you could buy something, build equity, have it increase in value, own that asset, and then sell it for more money. And now as a homeowner myself, I can tell you that being a homeowner is fun. It's a good, <laughs> it, it makes you feel great to come home to, uh, you know, in a, a, a home that you love, that you chose, that you selected. So basically the past 18 months have been gangbusters, crazy, frenetic, nutty pace, exhausting. And recently things have been slowing down. Uh, Martin uh, touched upon this. Why? Why are things slowing down? Why now? Well, you know, things can't, can't go at a frenetic pace forever. That's part of it. But interest rates started to increase. When interest rates go up 1%, it affects the buyer's ability to purchase by about 10%. So if interest rates have gone from three to six, for some buyers that's impacted their buying power by 20, 30%, so that's pretty significant. And then beyond that, we, we have a global war happening, the war in Ukraine and Russia. That gives people fear and, and anxiety, uh, inflation, everything costs more. Is now the right time to buy an apartment? I'm not sure. And then the stock market volatility. New York City is a city that is tied to the financial market. When people uh, you know, uh, lose money in the stock market, even if they're just paper losses, it gives them pause. But I can't stress right. to everyone that's listening on this call, that the next three to six months will be an amazing opportunity where, where new listings are gonna come to market, where old listings that have sat on the market for two, three, four, six months, whatever it is, you're going to have exhausted sellers who are willing to negotiate. This is what every buyer in New York City wants, a deal, negotiability, to be able to go and see an apartment and it's not gone in one week, to, to submit a bid and you are the only bidder. There's not five or seven bids above the asking after one open house. So this is the opportunity. This is the time. This is when you take out the money and you buy. That's great, Alex. I think that's a, that makes sense. Uh, just a couple of quick thoughts. Uh, you know, I remember during pandemic, uh, during that June to December time, that was really scary and prices were down and there were great opportunities. And a lot of buyers I met, they said something like, oh, I'll buy next year when it's 10% lower. Uh, it never went 10% lower. It is impossible. <laughs> it is impossible to time a market. You don't know when the bottom is in. You don't know when the top is in. You buy because you need it. You buy because you want it. You buy because you can afford it. Uh, and we're back to a more normalized market that has seasonality. So if you're in the marketplace right now and you're looking and there's like nothing on the market, it's because July and August are slow. People go away on vacations. People don't want their property shown, but I promise you September, October, November, new properties are gonna to come to market. And if there's an uptick in, in pandemic COVID cases, if monkeypox has you know reared its ugly head or whatever, there's gonna be amazing opportunities. Be ready, have your team in place, have everything ready to go. And when you identify the property of your dreams, you call me. Fair enough, absolutely.